Hello, this is Stephen from Design Fusion. Today we're looking at a convergent model, faceted model, and we're going to look at some of the reverse engineering tools, convergent tools. Here I'm just showing you the facets where we had patched in what used to be a logo there. We just patched in some faces. Um, if we zoom in, you can see some of the facets are a little bit rough. So the first thing I'm going to do is project this set of sketch curves onto the body. So we go into the reverse engineering and we're going to use the project curve and we can use different methods for selecting the curve here and then what objects to project onto and obviously which direction so that'll project it all the way through the model you can see we get our boundary projected there So I'm just going to change the color of the projected curve so we see the difference here. So I'll change these to brown and then we can hide the original sketch. So now we've kind of got a location for where we're going to be putting, putting in a new logo. So we're going to look at the reverse engineering tools on the polygon modeling today so that we can build a texture map. So the first thing I go to rapid surfacing and what, what we do with rapid surfacing is we use the underlying facet or convergent body and then we get to draw lines. So here I'm turning on the option to pick points on the facets or on the curves themselves and I just draw lines between the points I want to. Just grab the edge here and then when I accept that you see it turns red. That means it's mapped that spline down onto the facet bodies. Now here I'm grabbing the end of the spline. That's the one thing with rapid surfacing. We want to make sure we connect the endpoints when we draw the boundaries. It doesn't have to be exact, but you can see here if we just grab an edge, we can slide them anywhere along the facet model we want to and accept that. It turns red, so I can go in and grab the end of it again. And same thing, and we keep going. Now there is a node tolerance there, and you can see it's set uh, quite high at the moment. Um, and we'll get to that later on in the video here, but uh, just going to drag these into position, connect the very last endpoint, and then when I click OK here, you can see the changes colors because it's actually built a B-surf mapped against the points on that surface with the tolerances that we've used. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to hide the rest of the information here, but I'm going to use that rapid surface as the base for my um, For my texture map here. So just another command here, reverse normal. If you find your face is pointing the wrong direction when you're doing certain mappings, you can reverse it. So I'm going to go into the texture UV mapping here and that asks for the surface you want to work with and a starting edge. Now sometimes when you pick the start edge it's facing the wrong way. So here we just pick an edge until we sort of lined up. So if I grab this top one, you can see we've got the blue, green, and red points all uh, left to right, basically. So we've got a one-to-one -one mapping of our view. Now I'm adding our Design Fusion logo here and just dragging it around, moving it into position. And obviously that grid represents where that's going to be projected to on the surfaces here. Now in that um, image, the dark areas are going to be projected to 40 thou. The lighter areas will be projected less, and you've got some options here on how to morph this um, facet body. So when I say OK, it's going to give me a preview here of the logo mapped in. You can see dark areas are higher relief and the gray areas are shallower. And this is like from white to black, it's a height range. So we come back into modeling once we've accepted it. You can see we have the two bodies, so I'll turn off the rapid surface. So I just have this convergent facet body. And I'll show it compared to the original here. And then turn off some of those surfaces. So I can just turn on the boundary here. And I'm just going to trim this out because what we want to do is merge in that new faceted logo into our existing body. And there's different ways we can do that. We can do that by boundaries here. 
You can set some of the options. I'm going to edit a copy. I'm going to divide the regions. And again, in this method, you can draw right on the surface the boundary you want to um, clip to. Now, you could actually do this with the paintbrush method and paint out all the facets that you don't want, but this is just another way to be more exact in splitting the facets along the curves here. So we trim that out. And then I say OK. And you can see it created some convergent bodies, so I can hide some of these to see what we've got. Um, so it split out that one. We've got a few straggling f facets here. We can just hide those as well. And so that's our trimmed out area. And we'll turn back on the texture just so we can get a quick look at what that would be like if we paste it in. You can see at the bottom there's a slight uh, tolerance issue. Now we could go back in our rapid surfacing or any of the initial construction and we can change the tolerances there so we can get that much closer. Um, but there's another method we can choose as well. Um, instead of having this exact cutout of the pocket, we can sort of edit what we've done here. So. We're going to be using the merge disjoint sheets here. But before I do that, let's um, let's hide this textured body here. I'm just going to fill this area in just so you see another tool here, a quick fill. We grab the conversion body, we tell it the loop to fill in. It f makes a nice smooth fill of facets in there. And then I'll show you another way that we can trim out this boundary. So we'll just bring the projected boundary back so we have it to look at. And we're going to snip this again. And this time I'm just using a different method. Um, just going much larger with the selections here. Just, just leave some gap so that when we do the merging of disjoint, it's got some um, leeway in smoothing out those facets between the two differences in the surfaces. And in this case, uh, I'm just going to specify the one region I want to keep. I don't need that extra piece inside. So we've done like a very rough cut through there rather than directly along curves. And so you can see the difference is quite large, but that's where we use the merge disjoint. It's going to ask for the first body which is our main convergent scan there, their texture body that we're using. And then it wants to know sort of a start point for building the facets. So in this case, I'm just going to grab a location at the end of the uh, facets here, and we want to kind of match it up. So it's got a direct one-to-one -one map to start with as it goes around and builds all these facets. Um, you can specify tolerance here. We can also specify if we want to keep the original bodies or hide them. So let's hide them in this case. And we'll say OK there. And you can see it's filled in all those facets and it's had to do a blend up to that slight tolerance issue. Um, and you can see here it's, it's a lot smoother than it was before. So again, thanks for watching and stay tuned. We'll have more helpful videos like this coming your way.